Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the forest version of the iFlight Cinebi 4K 2 inch brushless whoop. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs and then head outdoors and test it out. The iFlight Cinebi 4K is available in two versions, 4S and 2S. I've got the 4S version which is bundled with 1104 5000 kV motors which can handle 4S batteries and the 2S version is bundled with 1104 8300 kV motors, which as far as I know can support 3S, but iFlight recommends to stick to 2S batteries. In addition, both bind and fly and plug and play versions are available. The plug and play version doesn't come with a receiver, so you will have to add your own one, and the bind and fly version comes with either Afro Sky, Fly Sky, or TBS Nano receivers. Inside the box, along with the quadcopter, you can find an extra set of 2 inch HQ props in addition to the ones that are already assembled on the quadcopter, some stickers, an OSD control board for the Cardex Star Zero camera, a bag that contains plenty of extra screws, an extra battery velcro strap, and antenna tubes for the AfroSky and FlySky receivers. In addition, you're also getting a 90 degrees micro USB adapter since the micro USB port on the flight controller is not accessible. So you're going to need to use it in order to configure it. And I recommend to be extra careful while using it since you don't want to break the micro USB port. In terms of specs, on the front of the iFlight Cinebi 4K, you can find the Cadix Tazier FPV slash HD recording camera. The top lens is dedicated for FPV and the bottom one for HD recording. The latency of the FPV camera is pretty low and its quality is great and currently it's superior than the other FPV split style HD cameras. When you're getting this camera separately, you can get this ND8 filter which is not bundled with this quadcopter. However, in this video I also tested the Tarzier 4K camera with and without the ND filter. As I mentioned before, this version comes with 1104 5000 kV motors, which can handle up to 4S batteries. Since this is a Whoop style quadcopter, the propellers are guarded inside propeller guards, and the propellers that are being used are 2 inch 3 bladed HQ props. Behind the camera unit, on the front of the quadcopter, you can find the iFlight XX Micro 16x16 16 stack. The bottom board is a 12 ampere 4 in 1 BLLE ESC. The center board is an F4 flight controller. And on the top, you can find the 48 channels VTX that supports smart audio using IRC trunk protocol, features an IPX antenna connector, and has a selectable output range of 25, 100, and 200 millivolts. Behind the micro stack, you can find the Cadix Tarzier camera board, which is based on dual 20 by 20 boards. On top of it, you can find the ready receiver in case you have the Bind and Fly version and on the back of the quadcopter, connected by an IPX connector, you can find the Foxeer Lollipop 3 FEV antenna. The battery is intended to be used on the top of the quadcopter and I think that the recommended battery to be used with this quadcopter is the GNB 520 mAh 4S LHV battery which fits perfect. So you can see that after mounting it using the battery velcro strap, it is properly secured and it's not going to fall off in the middle of the flight. In addition, the battery connector type is XT30 and since I have the TBS Nano version, the immortal antenna is nicely secured on the bottom of the quadcopter. In terms of dimensions, the wheelbase of the frame is about 105 millimeters. The distance between the left motors and the right ones is about 85 millimeters and the distance between the front motors and the back ones is 60 millimeters. This dead cat shape is going to make sure that the propellers are not going to get into your view, which is a nice feature for HD recording. In addition, the thickness of the bottom unibody plate is 2.5 millimeters, and the thickness of the top plate, and also the camera side plate, is 1.5 millimeters. The weight of the Cinebi 4K is 112 grams, not including a battery. Including a 3S 520 mAh GNB LHV battery, its weight is 153.9 grams, and including a 520 mAh 4S GNB LHV battery, the total weight is 167.9 grams. 
In order to configure the Cadix Star Zero camera, you will need to download and install the Cadix FPV app. Place a micro SD card inside the micro SD card slot, and I can confirm that it's working properly with a 128GB micro SD card. The recommended class is U3, especially if you're going to record videos at 4K. Then you need to power up the quadcopter. As you can see, now the camera is recording because you can see this LED flashing. So you're going to need to stop the recording procedure if you want to configure the camera. It's done by short pressing this button over here. And now we need to turn on the Wi-Fi hotspot in order to connect the app to the Codex Star Zero. So you're going to need to long press the same button that you just pressed for about three seconds. The green LED on the other side is going to start flashing. And now we are ready to connect to the Codex Star Zero board. So you're going to need to open the Wi-Fi settings on your phone, connect to the Codex Wi-Fi hotspot. The default password is 128. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hit connect. Open up the app that you just downloaded. Grant all the permissions. And now we can hit enter camera and configure the camera. So you can also see the video feed over here. You can select between the different modes, which are not applicable for FPV. But what interests you is to go to the configuration menu. Over here, you can change all the settings, switch between all the supported resolutions. In this video, I used the 2.7K 60 frames per second and the 4K 30 frames per second. So you can select your desired options. And I also recommend to set the bitrate to high. And I also highly advise to stay away from EIS which stands for image stabilization, because if you're going to turn it on, your video is just not going to be usable. Under device settings, you can also perform an SD format. So in case your camera is not recording, you need to put an SD card inside the micro SD card slot, go over here, press SD format, and probably then your problem is going to be fixed. Configuring the FPV camera is done separately. So if you wish to configure it, you'll need to use this OSD plug, which is found on the back of the quadcopter. You need to simply connect it to the provided OSD control board, then power up the quadcopter, and you can use this joystick in order to go through the camera settings. By default, the camera is set to a four by three aspect ratio, and the video format is set to PAL. So if you wish, you can tweak these settings. And on my flight footage, I only use the default settings. The next thing I've done is to head outdoors and test the iFlight Cinebi 4K using GNB 520 mAh 4S and 3S LHV batteries. In terms of flight time, you can expect about four minutes when not pushing the throttle, which is quite okay. And in terms of performance, the quadcopter performed better and could do some acrobatic maneuvers using the 4S battery. And anyway, you have to remember and keep in mind that the main purpose of this quadcopter is to take cinematic shots. And in my opinion, it excels in this purpose. As, as you're about to see, the flight footage is practically gen free. Now, in case you're wondering which quadcopter should you get, the iFlight Cinebi 4K or the Gepard C CinePro, unfortunately, I can't help you with this decision because I haven't tried the CinePro myself. However, I can tell you that this is an excellent quadcopter and I highly recommend it if you're in the market for a 4K CineWoop. Its only downside is that the VTX goes only up to 200 millivolts, and since I'm using the TBS Nano SE receiver, the range is of course much greater than the range of the VTX. And I think that it could have been nicer if they could include a VTX with a higher output strength. Now finally, I'm going to show you the flight footage. I hope you enjoyed these cinematic shots. And as always, if you have any questions about the iFlight Cinebi 4K, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.